Hi everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, today we are going to talk about some of my May favorites. Um, these are some things that I came across this past month that um, are either brand new or simply new to me. So if you're interested in finding out what they are, keep on watching. So if you guys follow me on Snapchat, you know this is like my seventh time filming this video. Um, I had a few issues the last time I taped it. My microphone stopped working in the middle. And the time before that I was filming fairly early morning and um, they started jackhammering outside my window. That was interesting. Um, so anyway, here we are. Hopefully this will take. Hopefully you are watching this one because I'm starting to get annoyed. Um, but okay, let's dig in. May favorites. Um, I can't believe it's June. It's like June 2nd um, today uh, and I, you know, May was an amazing fun-filled month so I'm kind of not surprised that it flew by but woo, we're already in June. All right, so um, if you guys watched my last episode you'd know that I spent the first weekend down in Maryland at the Sheep and Wolf Festival and at the Knot House in Frederick, Maryland. Um, that was tons of fun. My second weekend in May, I um, spent on Bainbridge Island. Oh, that was amazing. It was so beautiful. I, um, I was there because I was invited to participate in a knitting with company retreat, which was so awesome. Sorry, I have hair on my lip. Um, which was amazing. Um, Church Moss Yarns was hosting it. And um, we were at the Islandwood Retreat Facility on Bainbridge Island. Absolutely gorgeous, absolutely stunning. Um, I can't say enough good things about the entire weekend, about um, working with Knitting with Company that is um, owned by Catherine Lowe and Julie Hoover, um, and Church Mouse Yarns. A absolutely stunning. If you've ever visited, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you haven't and you've been to their site, you know, those pictures, you know, start to paint a picture of what to expect, um, but it really doesn't do it justice. It is so gorgeous, um, so charming, so quaint, and um, like most places, what makes it really special are the people. And um, I was able to meet, um, if not all, most of the people that work there, and every last one of them, welcoming, helpful, friendly, warm, um, I really can't say enough good things. And um, what's also amazing is they all seem to be like really into Bainbridge Island and into building that community. Um, so much so that one of the employees named Gregory, if you're watching, hello, miss you, hope Mexico was fun. Um, he, out of the blue, I think maybe five minutes into meeting him, he asked me if I was into um, fountain pens. I thought maybe it was a trick question. I wasn't exactly sure where he was going with that. So I said that I didn't think I was. I, I wasn't sure. I didn't know if he was gonna, you know, show me some magic, which he did. So he said, come on, I'm taking you to the Lost Quill, uh, which is a neighboring store um, to Church Mouse on Bainbridge Island and um, owned by a lovely woman, Annabella. She's um, just amazing. This store is covered with antique grandfather clocks and um, the, tick, the ticking of all the different clocks is in this like really interesting cadence and you'd think it would be, um, you know, make you crazy, but it was, it's really soothing. It's almost hypnotic. Annabella is hypnotic. She has the most sort of soothing voice and she sort of like lulls you into her world um, and so as soon as you walk in there's a big beautiful glass um, case full of fountain pens and wouldn't you know it I'm into fountain pens I was really digging it I um, was almost gonna buy a really beautiful um, flex nib fountain pen and um, it was very expensive so Annabella kind of talked me off the ledge and sort of brought me back to reality, kind of steered me in the right direction. So my first favorite, which isn't actually yarn or knitting related, um, is this 
Pilot fountain pen. Um, I absolutely love it. It's um, I got the gold color, um, and it comes in a fine nib. You can also get it in a medium nib, but I got the fine nib to start, and um, it was much less expensive than the first one I was checking out. This was uh, $20, and it also comes in a hard case with um, you know, a cutout foam insert to protect your pen. So, um, really, I think it's a really great buy. And every time I write with it, it just makes me feel important. I know, I'm such a loser. But it makes me feel important. And if you don't feel important, get a fountain pen, start writing with it. You will start to feel important. Um, and what else caught my eye were the actual inks for the fountain pens. I mean, they're... They're beautiful. They look like perfume bottles. They come in a box like this. I mean, there's many different kinds, but this was at the Lost Quill. Um, this is, um, I believe it's called Inaho. Um, it's by Pilot as well. I feel like I'm saying a dirty word. It's a little too close to Inaho, but Inaho. And the bottle, Feast your eyes on this beauty. It is stunning. And do you see that sort of divot in the bottle where, where the nib can go into? It's just beautiful. And this is the color, I believe, golden brown or gold. Um, I absolutely love it. I have, not, um, I have not used any of this ink yet. I'm still using up the black ink cartridge that came with the pen. So um, as soon as this runs out, I will be digging into that. Um, golden brown color. But anyway, back to church mouse and knitting and yarn. So um, I was at the store and as soon as I walked in, there were some dress forms with some really lovely, lovely, lovely um, sweaters on them. So I asked um, a sales associate there, you know, which, which design was this? And they said, oh, it's one of our new classics patterns. So of course I had to get it. Um, and it is called the Simple Tea. And you'll see that it has um, a few options. You can do it in a cap sleeve, you can do it in a bracelet length sleeve, um, and you can choose between two lengths. This is a sort of traditional hip length, and then there's a longer one, a tunic length, that has side vents, which is probably the one I'm going to end up doing. Um, it's knit in pieces, it's a drop shoulder silhouette, um, and it's, it's really beautiful. Um, if you want the hard copy, um, pattern you can order it off of churchmouseyarns.com. I'll put the info up on the screen down here. Um, but I'm really excited to dig into this. I don't know what yarn I'm going to use. I'm not sure. That's the fun part, right? Picking out the yarn. So anyway, um, so love, love this. Um, my second favorites is um, this yarn that I came across at Church Mouse, and it is. Um, by the manufacturer Katia. I believe they're Spanish based, Spain based, Spanish based, um, Spain based, and <clears throat> this particular base was milled in Italy. It is 70% cotton, 30% merino. Um, this is a 50 gram ball, 115 yards comes in it, and um, it has a really interesting construction. It has a cotton core. And, which is like white, and the black fuzz is kind of coming out of it, which is the merino. And so it kind of gives this really wonderful haloed look. And it's incredibly light um, and really super, super soft. And I actually got a chance to play around with it. So I knit up a ball. I started out with some stock and net, and then I moved into cables, and I really like the way it looks um, in the cables. I think the, the haloing really adds a lot of depth to the cables. It really makes them pop. Um, and then I played around and did some knit purl and some twisted stitches. And I think those are pretty, but I don't think, I think they just look a little, um, muddy. At least, at least this does. I think the knit purl one actually looks pretty cool. The white kind of is accentuating the purl lumps there. But, um, anyway, um, hopefully, I'll have time to maybe design something incorporating some sort of cabling like this, some sort of all-over cabling. I think that would look really cool. So, 
Um, keep an eye out for that. It may come. Not so soon, probably, but um, who am I kidding? You know, Church Mouse, the retreat was so much fun. Um, the attendees is really what made it so special. They were all so amazing. If any of you are watching, I miss you. Um, I feel like we made fast friends. I hope to see you soon. Um, somewhere, sometime. We came from all over, so um, it was kind of it was kind of sad to leave, but um, it was a great, great time. And one of the attendees there um, was a, a designer that I admire very much. Um, her name is Laura. She is the Laura behind Laura's Loops from the Pearl B site. I don't know if you're familiar with that, um, but it is the Pearl Soho um, blog. And they've actually combined their sites. So if you just go to Pearl Soho, um, there's like a create and a shop section and create was what Pearl B was. Um, and you can just click there and you'll find um, inspiration and patterns and um, other, other things that you can um, make. Um, so I've always, I've long admired Laura's um, patterns and when I found out she was at, she was one of the attendees at the retreat, I totally stalked her. I hope she doesn't think I'm totally weird, um, but um, <laughs> yeah, she just couldn't shake me all weekend. I was just, you know, spying on her, seeing what she was up to, what was she knitting. Um, so a couple days ago, I opened up my inbox and a new pearl pattern was released. This is the lightweight raglan pullover and wouldn't you know it, it is a Laura's Loops creation. So um, I just, I had to, you know, take a look at the pattern. Um, I had to run down to pearl <laughs> and get the yarn. Um, and you know, when it comes to these warmer months, these types of patterns are so up my alley. They're um, lightweight, um, simple, portable. They don't take a lot of brain power, of which I don't have much of in the summertime. I don't know what that is. It's like the heat sucks it out of me. Um, and, um, and much like this yarn, I start to look for um, a lot of fibers or a lot of yarns that incorporate plant-based fibers. So when I realized that this called for one of my favorite Pearl Soho bases, which is Linen Quill. It's one of their newer bases. Um, I, was, I was real excited. So I ran down to Pearl Soho and got um, five skeins of their Linen Quill in the Rose Granite colorway. Is that focusing? Um, it's so pretty. It's such a delicate pink. Um, the sales associates there promised me it didn't wash me out. Um, I hope it doesn't. I don't think it does. I don't really care. It's so pretty. And um, this is what it looks like in the skein. You can see a little bit more of the texture. The linen really gives it a nice rustic feel and um, you know there's like slight imperfections in the yarn um, that really make it I think really really unique and really really um, special and um, I went ahead and swatched swatched it up. The pattern called for size 4 needles, so that's where I started, but I felt like it was a little bit too loosey-goosey, so I went ahead and started swatching on 3s, which is this part up here, and I like this fabric much more. It's still open um, and summery, but it doesn't look, um, you know, like loose and messy, so I think I'm going to go with this, um, this particular needle size and this fabric. Um, unfortunately, I did not get her gauge. Um, mine is a little bit looser. Um, I think the gauge for the pattern is, I think it's 28 stitches and 33 rows to four inches. And I got closer to, well, six and a half stitches to the inch and like eight rows to the inch or like seven and seven and three quarters. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and stick with my gauge and I'm going to do a little um, matharoo and sort of change up this pattern to fit my gauge. And if any of you are interested in hearing me and sort of, sort of watching me talk through my process on how to do that, on how to kind of rejigger a pattern to fit your gauge, um, I think this would be a good one 
to do it for because it is um, knit in the round. It's stock and net, and um, there isn't a lot of shaping, so um, I think it would be a good example. Um, it would kind of give you a good idea as to you know what I what I do when I have to kind of recalculate gauge. Um, so if you are into a video like that, just thumbs up this video. You, that that'll let me know that you want to see that, and I can pull that video together um, for you. So. When I was down at Pearl Soho, um, when I was checking out, I completely forgot that I had been meaning to pick up this magazine. This is the new Making magazine. Um, it is absolutely stunning. The editor-in-chief is um, Carrie Bostic ho I don't know if you're familiar with her, but she is a wonderful designer, has done a lot of work for Quince & Co. Um, she's otherwise known as Matter Made. Anyway, she put together this publication and, you know, the cover is gorgeous, she's a great photographer, and I knew I wanted to get it, so I grabbed it, and when I started flipping through it, I was really surprised to see that it is truly a making magazine. There are um, a lot of different types of projects, like uh, quilting and sewing and embroidery and cross-stitching and crochet, and then there are about six um, knitting patterns. Um, in the back and they feature many of my favorite designers including Carrie um, but Cecily Glavick McDonald is also included Dawn Catanzaro is included she's one of my favorites let me find her pattern um, she is she just has a, such a great simple touch to her work this is Dawn's um, shawl isn't that lovely and uh, she is an amazing tech editor as well so love Dawn um, and love this, love this magazine. Um, I'm going to put information up below um, with a URL um, to let you know where you can find this. Um, I think a lot of a lot of yarn stores are, are carrying this or will be carrying this, but try and get it before it sells out. Um, really beautiful. Can't say enough good things about this. This was a true this was a true gift this past month, um, and right next to the Making Magazine, you know Pearl Soho. You go in there for one thing, you leave with like 10. So um, this was also at the counter, and uh, this is the latest issue of Knitwit. It is their spring 2016 issue called Hot. And um, I like this magazine. It's not, I have to admit, it's not one that I run out and grab um, when it is released, but I do like flipping through it. I love the quality of it. I like the paper. Um, it's much like the Making Magazine. It has like uh, matte paper, um, fairly thick um, paperweight, and really beautiful pictures. And they're very inspiring, um, but usually that's about it. I kind of end up just sort of flipping through them, and, and they're pretty, and, um, and that's about it. Um, but this particular issue has a very special lady on the cover. I don't know if you're familiar with her, but this is Maura Ambrose, and she is the brains behind Folk Fibers. Um, she's absolutely wonderful. She is um, a hand quilter, and um, she hand dyes all of her fabric using natural dyes, and I think she grows all of the plants um, and other things that she uses for the natural dyes on her property in Texas. Um, she's just she's just amazing. Um, I had the I had the fortunate opportunity of taking a class with her at QuiltCon in 2015 um, down in Austin, Texas. She was teaching a hand quilting class and she's just phenomenal. She's sweet and humble and um, really warm and just you know a beautiful person. So um, if you are interested in finding out more about her, I would pick up this copy, um, but I'll also put uh, her, her information down below as well and a link to her site. It's it's beautiful. And last, um, I couldn't help myself. I had to talk about um, the new Plucky Knitter colors. They are the small batch colors and they are um, speckled. If you are familiar with Plucky Knitter, you know that they're more known for their um, saturated, extremely solid um, hand-dyed colors. Um, so solid that I feel like they're like magical 
they're magical elves working at their barn. Um, but, you know, really beautiful. And so they came out with a whole bunch of small batch speckled colors. I think maybe 14. I could be wrong. This happens to be number two. And um, this is what it looks like in the skein. This is what it looks like wound up. And I did a little swatch. I used uh, size sixes for this and it gave me a nice fabric, it has beautiful drape like, like cashmere wood. Um, but I was really, really pleasantly surprised at how subtle the colors were. I mean, I don't know why I'm saying I'm surprised. Um, Plucky just, they always hit it out of the park when it comes to colors. Um, and I just love this. It looks really um, watercolory. It's very, very Monet. Um, so I, yeah, I'm a big, big fan. Um, I don't know if you're aware of this, but it is the Plucky Knitters ninth anniversary and they're celebrating all weekend with um, a bunch of updates. I believe they're going to have three updates over the course of the weekend. Check out their Ravelry group um, and um, you'll find all the details for the updates and, and a whole a whole host of other things um, knit plucky related and um, I think they're offering free shipping on the three updates this weekend so I think it's your chance to get some of the small batch colorways. That's it! Um, thank you so much for tuning in. Again, thumbs up this video if you do want to see a video about um, re reconfiguring a pattern based on your gauge, if it's different from the pattern's gauge, and comment below on some of your May favorites. I would love to hear about some things that you love, that you came across, um, that you found over the last uh, month or so, or whatever, um, some of your favorite things, and I hope to do this um, type of favorites video every month. So yeah, so just stay tuned and I will see you guys very soon. I also don't want to bore you because that's kind of boring. I actually attended the church mass retreat as well. Who is calling me? Oh my god. If you are interested in purchasing this, purchasing this, thought it was going to be like, you know. What? Is that possible?